गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन सो द टूडेज टॉपिक ऑफ पी जी एक्टिविटी इज क्वालिटी कंट्रोल्स इन हिस्टोपैथोलॉजी वील सी द क्वालिटी कंट्रोल्स इन हिस्टोपैथोलॉजी अंडर द फॉलोइंग हेड क्वालिटी कंट्रोल एम्स एट मेंटेनिंग अ हाई स्टैंडर्ड ऑफ केयर इन मेडिसिन इज इंपॉर्टेंट टू बोथ पब्लिक एंड मेडिकल प्रोफेशन सो द प्रोसेस इज बाय विच द स्टैंडर्ड्स आर मॉनिटर्ड एंड मेंटेन दैट इंक्लूड्स द मेडिकल ऑडिट्स क्लिनिकल ऑडिट्स एंड क्वालिटी कंट्रोल It includes the documentation, training, implementation of desired practices and procedures. It removes the errors in clinical laboratories that can, uh, that are actually a defect from ordering test to reporting the results. So, the quality control is a system of routine technical activities to measure and control the quality of inventory and appropriately interpreting and reacting on the errors. The quality control uh, is actually used to assess the quality of analytical data and quality assurance that. is an overall management plan to guarantee the integrity of data the quality control in histopathology includes the measure that must be included during the tissue processing for monitoring the quality of laboratory testing its accuracy and precision of results there is a quality control allows the detection of errors for immediate corrective actions and it is an integrated coordination between the technical and the managerial activities along with the highly skilled histopathologist so there are organizations that are available for maintaining this quality controls a uh, few of which are uh, there are assistance in procedures and few are accreditation programs like uh, international organization for standardization clinical and laboratory standard institutes and uh, nabl that is national accreditation board for testing and calibration laboratories is an autonomous body under the aegis of department of science and technology under the government of india it is uh, having a register under the societies act and all the documents are available at uh, its site at nabl.nablindia.org the free of cost and it actually maintains a linkage with the international laboratory accreditation cooperation and the asia laboratory accreditation cooperation uh, the types of quality controls like internal and external quality control so internal quality control is applied in the manual techniques such as uh, immunohistochemistry analysis and the special testing procedures of tissue section of cytopathology laboratories and histopathology there are external quality control assessment programs those are available in other countries like uh, america and the united kingdom these are two distinct systems that can be used to deliver quality assurance such as a selective system where stain preparation from departmental archival records are used to assess the quality of staining or distributive systems in which participating laboratories are asked to stain sections that have been submitted by the scheme organizer this quality control is important in the laboratory medicine either it is in the uh, field of pathology microbiology clinical chemistry or transfusion medicine it is important everywhere quality control actually a five q framework there it uh, start from quality planning to the quality love processes then quality control then quality assessment and then there will be the quality improvement so it has some set goals objectives and some quality requirements that to be met the audits these are the process of systematic critical analysis of a quality of diagnostic procedures uh, economy of effort and the utilization of available resources it aims at assessing the current practice and instituting the change where deficiencies are identified so there is audit cycle from identifying an issue or the problem in the laboratory or in the quality control to setting some criteria and standards then observing the practice and the data collection that is done then comparing the performance with the previous uh with the standard states and some criteria is provided then implementing the change it can be done by process mapping with the in the form of flow charts and tables errors that can happen at the any level at the material at the machines and at the manpower level so there are few quality checks in the histopathology so the errors in the pathology like a type 1 error that is because of temporary inattention in the case of high workload and the poor working conditions type 2 errors can happen because of lack of knowledge or skill or expertise uh, then there is type uh, called as premature closure where we uh, jump to the conclusions without taking any peers review and there are some latent errors that are because of lack of facilities to make the right diagnosis important issues that can occur at the uh, quality controls are like uh, 
lack of objective numeric data descript being the descriptive nature of reports there is individual judgment and bias can happen there is subjective interpretation so report results may be differ from person to person then a uh, uh, non uniformity in reporting patterns reporting the reporting time that is turn around time that has to be maintained for the frozen section and for the uh, uh, histopath or the biopsy specimens reporting then validating the histopathological diagnosis is, that is all the important issues uh, after the fixation after the requisition form we should check that the specimen is uh, sent in the formalin or not uh, and we should advise our clinicians uh, our colleagues to send that the specimen surgical specimens in the neutral buffer formalin that is it uh, uh, that volume had and its volume has to be 15 to 20 times more than the specimen so neutral buffer formalin what is neutral buffer formalin is a formalin buff buffer to a neutral ph and the 10% formalin solution to the neutral ph would mix in quantities of a buffer typically a sodium phosphate so for that we take 100 ml of formalin uh, in 900 ml of water with 4 g per liter of a mono basic acid and 6.5 g per liter of a di basic acid uh, we mix it and then we get a 10% of formalin solution what is the advantage of neutral buffer formalin is that the neutral ph will inhibit the formation of troublesome acid formulation formalin pigment that we see on the slide then transportation to the lab is uh, should be done as early as possible by the responsible person and the proper guidance to be provided to the person transporting the sample to the lab to avoid any delay is it is very important especially in the cases of frozen section that has to be reported in the 20 to 30 minutes so the proper guidance to be provided to the person for transporting the sample and the providing a proper size bottle according to the size of specimen should be advised for the easy removal of specimen the receiving at the samples at the patho lab there are some sops standard operating procedures and it depends on some acceptance and the rejection criteria so we check the number of bottles that is sent by clinicians we label them as 1 2 or a b c then matching a patient's every detail name age sex mrd number ward number on the bottles as well as on the requisition form that has to be done properly then we allocate a unique histopathology number unique histopathology number Uh, to that uh, surgical specimen received we maintain a record and we do a uh, entry in the register after the specimen receiving uh, we take that sample for the grossing uh, so what is the grossing and sampling that includes the precise and systematic gross description dissection and selection of sections for microscopic study so uh, we take a, a we measure a specimen then we uh, observe the specimen if there are any discoloration or any nodularity and then we measure it again and then we give a section from that side at the grossing station we must be having adequate spacing for easy cleaning adequate ventilation dissecting the wooden board integrated ruler and the sprinkler system to be provided with the rounded a sinks with the proper system to prevent blockages we should have a adequate illumination at the grossing station with the sharp instruments uh, to avoid the cutting artifacts then the adequate water flow should be there available and also uh, and the cassettes and the labels and the lead pencils should be provided at the grossing station once the sample we take it for grossing the we change the formalin that must be 15 to 20 times the volume of a tissue received uh, then uh, for some tissues we need a, a fixation like a standard samples we fix for 24 to 48 hours for bone till it's decalcified then for placenta we fix it for 48 hours and for biopsy specimen uh, 6 to 8 hours so the standard recent report recommends that the tissue should not be fixed for more than 36 to 36 hours to avoid over fixation and cross linking we ensure a proper bed loafing and slicing at 1 cm interval for the proper fixation for the bigger specimens like the mrm specimens we describing the specimen weight and measurement and take appropriate pictures of fresh and fixed and fixed state in the clean background that is needed uh, to correlate while the reporting and it, noting its consistency is an also important 
how we section the tissue after the overnight fixation the next day sectioning is to be done uh, for sectioning the optimum size should be taken according to the size of cassette in case of bony fragment the sectioning after decalcification is taken inking the margins for identification and involvement by the tumor is very important uh, for the bigger specimen like as the mrm specimens and we take the adequate sections from the pathological area and we draw the diagrams whenever necessary the cassettes that are routinely used in histopathology are the huge uh, metallic cassettes made up of stainless steels uh, size of ranging between 3 to 6 inches in diameter and thickness of 3 to 6 mm in order for processing the reagents to penetrate tissue quickly and effectively the tissue must be less than 4 mm thick and tissue pieces must not be crowded in the processing and cassettes and the plastic cassettes of varying colors are also available from the standard size ranging from 41 into 28.5 into 6.7 mm the proper care should be taken for the smaller biopsy fragments uh, to avoid any loss of tissue like using the cassette with a very smaller pore size can prevent the loss of tissue fragment and the standard size of cassette which are designed specifically for the, the smaller biopsy tissue fragments uh, uh, should be used with the pore size of a uh, uh, cassettes 8 mm to 0.67 mm we can use a filter or the uh, and uh, staining with the eosin can be done for identifying the smaller tissue fragments and biopsies or the especially the core biopsies after the uh, 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 grossing we will move we move for the uh, tissue processing the tissue processing is very much critical step that needs to be monitored with the utmost care the stages of fixation dehydration and clearing is uh, of sufficient length to ensure completeness and the all steps of the tissue processing must be documented and displayed in the laboratory and the technical staff should be aware of this contents we are having a automated tissue processor uh, the tissue should not be uh, under process or over process that may hamper the tissue details and the total time we require in the automated tissue processor is uh, 14 hours with the regular changing of a chemicals and discarding the expired ones and recording the number of sample that are processed daily that to be keep in a record we are having a cryo section machine cryostat machine um, Uh, that is a uh, frozen section which is usually sent on urgent for the urgent diagnosis during the surgery for benign and malignant lesion uh, mostly is it sent for the margin free of tumor the simple uh, tissue sample should represent the specimen with the proper request form and the time consideration is about 20 to 30 minutes for reporting of frozen section and we should maintain the communication with the surgeon to give a proper report in the frozen section there are some quality checks like the uh, sample once collected should be frozen immediately and it should not be fixed in a formalin should not contain any necrotic area we should take a proper orientation of the tissue we should uh, take the pictures whenever needed never two cases in one grossing area never two frozen sections should be done in the one grossing area microtome inside the chamber is under the constant temperature control of a uh, minus 20 degrees so it a machine has to be started in the morning if they are sending a uh, uh, so, uh, frozen in the 10 or 11 and the correlation has to be done in each cases with the history the cryostat machine should must be cleaned periodic, periodically and the system identification of the block and slide should be established unlabeled slide should never be used and record keeping is at most important everywhere then after the sectioning we prepare a block uh the high quality wax should be used for infiltration and especially for embedding to ensure the high quality of a blocks that are easy to cut the volume of the wax should be 20 to 25 times of the volume of the tissue and wax should be changed at least once during the process uh section cutting in the section cutting we need a good quality microtome which is regularly serviced and calibrated with the sharp blade to be used and we must try to use the disposable blades the thickness we take on the cutting uh, of the tissue is uh, for the routine tissue we cut at 3 to 5 microns typically one cell thick and one section per slide and one slide per block for the biopsy t- uh, tissue we cut 2 to 3 micron and a few sections per slide like 2 to 3 slides per block we can use for staining we should use a good quality stains 
and a special strength should be advised whenever necessary for its even less nuclear 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 and cytoplasmic identification for the contrast and for the cleaning the xylem uh using controls can helps in the maintaining the quality of the stains and the proper storage of the stains if expired we should discard labeling the container labeling the container which is contain concentrations and its expiry date and has to be placed in the proper area in the dark should be done ensuring all the equipments and instruments used in laboratory are of the standard quality and calibrated at the periodic intervals the microscopes and their parts should be serviced regularly and maintaining the monthly stock register for the chemicals and materials should be used in histopathology what are the common artifacts that we can see on the slide if the tissue is not properly cut or the staining is uh, st staining is uh, not good then we can go uh, we can see the crush artifacts uh, where which is actually artificial elongation of the distortion in the cells and tissues which can be removed by using a small atraumatic blunt forceps formalin pigment which can uh, which is seen is because of expired formalin that lowers the ph and causes crystals it is prevented by using the neutral buffer formalin which should be changed every 6 monthly uh we can see the artifacts like ice crystal damages or freeze thaw effects that is because of due to slow freezing of the tissue so we can avoid it by freezing fast then we can see the floaters or the cross contamination artifacts this is actually the tissue that appear on the slide that do not belongs to the particular area and have floated during the grossing so thorough rearranging of the board and instrument between the specimen should be considered there is a venation blind effect is actually a fine parallel cracks in the section so to over this we can take a thinner sections and sharpening of a knife before cutting should be considered alternate thick and thin sec thin sections so we can get if the wax is too soft block or the blade is loose and the clearance angle of microtome is faulty so we can avoid it by cooling the block tightening the block or blade and increasing the clearance angle we can get tissue folds on the section these are produced when the tissue adheres to the under surface of the blade and seen most commonly with the fatty tissues and with the dull blade so we can avoid this by transferring the section to the new water bath we can get bubbles those are formed under the cover slip when mounting media is too thick for this we a clearing agent compatible with the mounting medium to be used and use adequate amount of mounting media there are some chemicals uh, as it is a laboratory we will uh, come under contact with the chemicals like including chloroform chromic acid dioxin formaldehyde nickel chloride uh, potassium dichromate and dyes like oramin o basic vitamin and congoret these are carcinogenic so we should take a proper care and we should do the procedure whatever it is done with the gloves xylene and toluene have the neurotoxic effects on benzene and can affect the blood so taking a proper safety measures are very much important in the uh, histopathology and the stored stored chemicals should be examined periodically for replacement and deterioration and uh, deterioration and container in, container integrity the container should be labeled with a certain basic information like chemical name what is the manufacturer's name its address storing and handling instructions the date stop received receipt and the opening date purchase expiration expiration date hazard warnings and safety after the pre analytical phase there is analytical phase it is actually responsibility of histopathologist to perform a final quality control examination during the slide recording reading and the during the slide reading and determining the slide is adequate for diagnostic interpretation the slide reading alone along with the the slide re reading along with the relevant data and preparation of report what are the quality checks in the analytical phase are like labeling a slide there is a good quality slide should be checked intra versus post op diagnosis should be considered taking the fresh section whenever necessary and advising the special strain whenever necessary in the analytical phase what we need is a clinical pathological correlation we should keep in communication with the surgeon to clean verify with the clinical history appearance and exactly what information they want comparing with the other reports of frozen cyto and previous histopath reports uh, considering the cytology versus histopathology error rate taking the peers review and the reviewing by the experts the proper description of the report
an impression should be given we should stage a malignancy via the capture process whenever needed we should record on the diagnosis we should adopt a new knowledge and practices uh, we should do a blinded random case review external contest consultation should be done and entry in the register with the proper diagnosis for the future references should be advised we should encourage on the interdepartmental discussions the post analytical stage a uh, stage phase is actually a the post analytical phase is actually a start from the report generation to the proper dispatching of the report to the patient or to the uh, doctor uh in the report generation the standard we should have a some standard format for reporting there should not be any typing errors in the final report we should double check the reports uh, before signed by the authorized personnel uh then we dispatch the report uh, through the proper channel storage of reported material slides and blocks for 10 year that is the, done at our place uh we should discard the visa uh, regularly on the monthly basis uh what is the turn around time turn around time is actually a uh, timely reporting of the surgical pathology specimens and to correct any deficiencies for the frozen section it is to be done in 20 to 30 minutes for the biopsies in 2 to 3 days and for the routine uh, surgical specimens we do it in a 5 to 6 days what are the conclusions we draw from these that the quality evaluation processing and monitoring of establishment procedures and activities of histopathology laboratory are essential to function effectively and safely the standard quality con controls of histopathology laboratory and the work facilities are must and all standards must be applied to function effectively as any misdiagnosis or error in the report can lead to massive impact on the quality of services and health consequences to the patient thus laboratories must follow the quality rule and standards that are already established the quality committee should be established to ensure a routine review of for quality data and initiative improvements were required by doing the audit cycles and uh, medical audits the promotion of health and safety of uh, patients laboratory personnel and environment should be primary objective in the quality and safety control program adopted by the histopathological laboratory uh, these are my references thank you